la lucha, Peña Nieto, escucha, y el pueblo en esta lucha. My name is Fatima, I'm from Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, AFL-CIO, and I am here today to show solidarity against the impunity, uh, with solidarity with the teachers and students and just um, uh, the, the general community um, in Oaxaca and the entire Mexico. Um, I'm here because of the impunity of the government, um, the disappearance and the killings that have been going on since Plan Merida, um, which is our taxpaying dollars, sending billions of dollars to mil militarize uh, the police in um, Mexico and make it a state, uh, a state police. Um, so I'm here to just show solidarity and create awareness of the, the issues that are happening in Oaxaca because we're much to blame here in the U.S. for the foreign policies that um, that we have with Mexico and other places like Palestine um, and around the world. Thank you. Name? Uh, my name is Carolyn, and I'm here in support of the teachers that were murdered in uh, Oaxaca and in support of union solidarity. We need to stand together with our brothers and sisters wherever they are when they're struggling for fair working conditions and fair contracts. And what does the United States have to do with what's going on in Mexico? I think that the United States is, is uh, supporting the Mexican regime down there, and also we supply them with guns. You think that the United States should continue to supply guns to Mexico? I think the United States needs to rethink its policy around guns and ammunition completely. And privatization, the teachers are protesting the corporatization, privatization of education in Mexico. What do you think about that? I think that it's wrong. I think that should be a public good, just like health care. I think uh, education is something that we all need and is good for the common and is good for the, the common good. And to privatize it and make it a monetary uh, issue is, is, is wrong. I'm a staff member with the California Nurses Association. My name is Lisa Gutierrez Guzman. I'm the Secretary of United Educators of San Francisco, but I'm primarily, primarily here as an individual because I believe we didn't have enough time to organize something official, but mainly because I believe that teachers all around the world and all working people should stay in, uh, in unity with the struggle of the Mexican teachers in, in, in Oaxaca. And this massacre, it seems like the military, the police, we're shooting using helicopters, U.S. supplied helicopters, military equipment to, to basically terrorize and jail the leadership of the union there, the teachers union. What does it mean to you that something like this is happening to our neighbor in Mexico, to the teachers and, and education workers in Mexico? Well, first of all, I have a lot of relatives in Mexico, and, and I know that the conditions of the, uh, the teachers in, in Mexico are far worse than the conditions even of the teachers here in, in, the, in the United States. And they're more like work, regular working people, and not on the middle class status. And they're fighting for the, just the basic rights to even having teacher education schools. They call them normal schools in Mexico. The fact that the government came down so strongly against the, the workers that are on strike is a sign of beginnings of, of fascistic tactics, I think. And I could see that that happening here if we don't stand up and make this movement larger and see the connections. Well, hasn't the United States, both Democrats and Republicans, supported the militarization of Mexico, arms, military, uh, the so-called war on drugs, that war seems now to be aimed at the working people, the teachers in Mexico. Mexico is owned by the United States money and um, in every aspect. I just came back from Mexico on a family vacation and you just see aspects of U.S. imperialism all over the country. Every company you could think of is, is down there. And from the maquiladoras that are there, you know, the U.S. run factories and stuff like that to the regular McDonald's and the whatevers. It's just a sign that it's a U.S territory, really. And NAFTA was supported by Clinton, both Bill and Hillary. She supports militarization. She supports uh, trade agreements with Mexico. She supports, I guess, continued military aid. What do you think about your union supporting Hillary Clinton at this point? Well, I wasn't in support of it. And, um, you know, I think the, the fact that they did an early endorsement way back when, both are, I'm an emerged local, UESF, and uh, both our national organizations uh, did early, especially the NEA, but not too long ago, AFT went ahead and did the same thing. Um, you know, they don't, not even listening to the rank and file and what, what we want and what we desire.
you know, Clinton represents big money as well. And privatization, corporatization, standardized testing, it seems like it really was pushed here. It's being pushed in the United States and it's affecting teachers, education workers, charters are destroying public schools in the United States. Do you think there's a correlation between what's going on in Mexico and in the United States? From what I understand, in Mexico is a, a fight against privatization, and, and that's what many of us in our unions are, are fighting for here as well. Uh, it has to be a much bigger fight here in the United States, but boy, I really respect the leadership of the Mexican educators for sure. So what do you say to the Mexican teachers here today? <laughs> we stand united with you. Can you speak in Spanish? Sí, puedo hablar en español. Claro que sí, que estamos unidos con ustedes en sus luchas, porque las luchas de ustedes es nuestras luchas también. My name is uh, Ricardo Ortiz, and uh, you know, I'm an activist for uh, social justice, and uh, particularly uh, things of uh, labor and uh, imperialist uh, struggles. In Mexico, what is happening is uh, that uh, it is an ongoing uh, openness of uh, this uh, capitalist neoliberal uh, offensive that is going on. I mean, the, the highest uh, point since the implementation of NAFTA, you know, created by the Clinton administration to privatize and open Mexico to rape by multinational corporations such as uh, Monsanto and so on. And uh, you see similar patterns uh, like in Puerto Rico, the U.S. colony. I mean, uh, now it's at the mercy of uh, these uh, uh, hedge funds uh, companies such as Oppenheimer Fund, uh, Franklin uh, Investment Funds, and so on, that are pillaging and raping, you know, uh, the working class elsewhere. So uh, what has happened in Mexico is just consequence of a repressive, authoritarian, murderous policy by a capitalist neo-colonial government. And the U.S. unions uh, are supporting Hillary Clinton. What role does Hillary Clinton have to do with what's going on in Mexico with privatization and, and the militarization of Mexico? Well, I mean, uh, as a Secretary of State, uh, she has supported all the foreign policy uh, that uh, the U.S. supports. She has been in the board of uh, Walmart, which is one of the most rapacious and criminal companies in the whole world. Um, so that alone itself uh, shows where you know this person is uh, politically. I mean, no uh, trade union, no, nobody in the working class should be uh, supporting Hillary Clinton, nor any capitalist uh, politician. And what should the unions, U.S. unions, do in solidarity with? both the Mexican brothers and sisters, but also Puerto Rican workers who face privatization, shutdown of schools and their economy? Well, the, as far as they go is just do uh, solid, as, as far as the case of Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, they, ver you know, uh, verbally uh, and timidly have said that they uh, support, I mean, uh, oppose uh, the draconian measurements and the legislation that uh, has been approved in the House of Representatives. But that doesn't follow through with what is supposed to be needed. They need to shut down, I mean, uh, workplaces, uh, do strikes in solidarity with the Puerto Rican people. I mean, uh, statements of solidarity alone are not, you know, that doesn't deliver. We need more militant actions. In the U.S. and here for the American working class itself, that is on the defensive against these uh, neoliberal pro-corporate uh, policies that uh, the Obama, you know, Bush, uh, the, all these administrations have been waving against uh, the working class. And what he actually told us is that he does not have, you know, full information. He said he sees things like we do, that there is violence happening, and he is going to convey all of our thoughts immediately to, to the government um, as we speak, apparently, as we, as we leave um, this delegation. But we're very clear that it's unacceptable that, that, that what is happening. He says he doesn't have a full report. He's going to give a full report to the government when we come in. And, um, and we also talked about, in particular, our brother from Global Exchange was saying that this isn't just for the people in Mexico. This also includes, you know, San Francisco, people of Mexican heritage also, because of, you know, the lack of democracy down there, you know, doesn't reflect very well on, on anything here in the United States.
Hey, Lita Blanc, president of United Educators of San Francisco. So I spoke in the name of our 6,000 members telling the uh, deputy consul that we stand for the rights of our brothers and sisters in Oaxaca and Mexico in general, their rights to... Uh, to, to free speech, to the right to strike, the right, and that they, that they were standing up for the right to public education for their students the same way we in the United States are standing up for the right to public education of our students um, and that we wholeheartedly support the demand for the release of the prisoners, in particular of the three leaders uh, of the Oaxacan Teachers Union, and that we works and, and we wanted the, re the return of the disappeared and um, yeah, and and the one thing he, I'd say he offered, and I don't, I would like to sit, have it confirmed, is that the government has agreed, has dropped the conditions for sitting down with the teachers union to negotiate. So we had heard that they were, there were, uh, con, it was conditional that the teachers renounce their demands. So we'll see if that's true. And privatization, what does that have to do with what's going on with the teachers in Mexico? So a big part of the teachers' struggle right now is that they took a stand against the so-called reforms in Mexico, whereby teachers in particular, uh, beginning about two years ago, were asked or made to take tests, um, in particular uh, to uh, those teachers who were being very active and outspoken against the uh, reforms. and. Based on those results, um, they're going basically firing teachers who are um, actively supporting public education. And to finish on the on the out on the on the report back, if I can say it, uh, Francisco had one of the good lines because when he said there are no conditions to getting back to the bargaining table to talk about this reform or whatever the heck they want to call it that's happening, and Francisco said, well, that was a very weird way of asking to get people to the table by killing teachers and and arresting them. So that was that was a very good line. He did say unequivocally that we do not believe in violence and we don't have the full report and we and we're against it, um, but. But I gotta, I gotta hand it off to my tocayo, Francisco Martin del Campo, who, uh, who reinstated that, that comment. Uh, the other thing that we commented is the, our work with the interfaith level, uh, the churches, and I personally I did talk with Bishop Justice, and I talked with uh, Father Richard Smith, who relayed the message to the Anglican leadership as well, and their concern about the government's, uh, what, what a way to negotiate by killing people who are, who are trying to negotiate. But we made it very clear that those efforts, uh, we said, look, this, obviously the office here is to serve people in San Francisco, but the killings and the attacks in, in Oaxaca are affecting family members here in San Francisco, health-wise, emotionally, in many, many ways, economically, as people have to send more money to support to deal with the violence and the effects of the violence. We have Oaxaqueños here who are very deeply worried about their own relatives in Oaxaca. And we know that in the countryside, people are being placed in much more danger than in the city where there's news and there's those outlets. So I think what he committed to was getting a full report I thought it was pretty strange that they, they have, knowing how many people from Mexico live in this area, that they don't have, they, what he said to us, we don't have any information, all we know is what we see in the news like you do. So I thought, wow, that's pretty silly of a, of a council to not have information. No? So he committed to getting information, getting back to us, and we're going to do like the drill, like the hammer over here on my left, we're going to continue drilling until we get the correct information. And we have to work, and we did relate to him that we will do everything in our power to stop funding for military for Mexico. We have to stop the plan Mierda, I mean Merida, <laughs> este, which is, uh, and the Plan Frontera Sur, uh, because these are programs that are nothing but militarization, programs with our tax dollars. Thank you. Is, it, is the San Francisco Labor Council going to speak out about this as far as military aid to Mexico? Well, I already went to the press and said that uh, even though we don't have an official position, I think that everybody that's standing around here um, would be putting in, put in the position that there should be no military aid given to Mexico if they're going to be using it against, of all people, teachers um, who, are in, who are in protest of, of uh, what, what is happening with the so-called reform in education. Sullivan, I'm a member of the United Educators of San Francisco, the Teachers Union.
And you're here to support the teachers, education workers in Mexico. What's going on in Mexico? Well, what's happening is that um, the government of Pena Nieto is cracking down on the teachers union. And also, he's he and his government have been introducing uh, neoliberal style reforms that have been um, that have failed in the United States, and now they're trying them in Mexico. They're trying to um, uh, introduce um, uh, um, standardized testing, and the standardized testing will um, affect whether the teachers get rehired or not, very similar to what's happening here. And they want to shut down a bunch of the teacher education schools because they want to um, deprofessionalize the profession. And there have been some uh, rowdy but very peaceful demonstrations, and they've been arrested and fired on. And in Oaxaca, several people were killed just basically in cold blood by the, by the um, I don't know whether it's the federal police or the state police, but one of the government agencies. And so um, I'm here to express my outrage with that and to express my solidarity with the Mexican teachers because they're fighting for the education of their students and they're fighting for their rights as workers. And um, yeah, that's why I'm here. And this privatization and corporatization of education, uh, is it going on as well in the United States? Oh, hex yeah. Corporate reforms have failed and charter schools have failed. They um, squander their money. They kick out students that um, are not performing as well as they would like. They, um, they take the taxpayers' money and they use it to fund administrators instead of services for the children. It's been a big problem. Luckily in San Francisco, we don't have that many charter schools. Um, oh, the other thing is many charter schools are non-union, which means that teachers have, have no rights in those schools at all. They have to show up when they're, when they're told to, they have to work long hours, they get very little pay, and are basically can be fired at the whim of, of anybody. Who's behind these charters? I understand there are billionaires, very wealthy people behind the charter industry. Yeah, it's Bill Gates. I mean, he's one of those people who just thinks he can come in and just give a quick fix to all of our educational problems. Educational problems are very complicated, and he, you know, thinks that it's because the teachers are bad, and if we do this and that and make everybody else more accountable, quote-unquote, we'll solve the problems. And he's realizing that it's not that simple at all. Um, uh, education in California has been defunded for the past, um, oh, I don't know, 1980, so the past 30 years since Proposition uh, 13 has passed. And I've talked to some old timers who remember working in California before all those budget cuts, and it was beautiful. The students had enough services, they had enough equipment. But who, who's done that? Isn't it, haven't the Democrats been in charge in California of allowed this uh, transfer of uh, taxation to working people and against corporations and the billionaires? Um, I think that the Democrats are partially to blame, yeah. Um, and I think that what we need to do now is to start fighting back and to start um, um, reforming Proposition 13 so that corporate taxes are, are, are increased so that corporations can pay their fair share. Right now, corporate property taxes have been frozen. And so, in other words, if you have a building that you've had since 1980, your corporate taxes, your corporate real estate taxes have not gone up, and that's incredibly unfair. Nobody wants, you know, widows and orphans to be kicked out of their homes, but the corporations in California can certainly be called upon to, to pay their fair share. And there are over 100 billionaires in California. I mean, where's all this money going? It doesn't seem like it's going to education. No, it's not going to education. It's going to line their pockets. And it's very frustrating because there are some states in the union that really don't have any money. But California is not one of them. We have lots of money. And these people who are making money need to give back to the community. It's what's fair. It's the American way. And we need to, you know, kind of hold their feet to the fire, so to speak. And what are you saying to the Mexican teachers here in uh, San Francisco? Uh, we support you. We're in the struggle with you. We understand the problems that neoliberal reforms can cause. Um, we're outraged by the fact that your uh, government just feels like it can fire at will on unarmed, peacefully demonstrating teachers. And um, we're here to express our solidarity. I'm Alan Benjamin. I'm a delegate to the San Francisco Labor Council, a member of the Office Professional Employees Union Local 29. And 
What do you think the role of the United States is in Mexico? Do they have any part in what's happening with these massacres? They have everything to do with these massacres. The military aid that goes to Mexico in the name of supposedly fighting against the drug cartel or fighting against terrorism. It all goes to repress the social protest movement. First and foremost, the trade unions, especially those that act independently, that are fighting against the very reforms, the energy reforms that were aimed at privatizing Mexico's oil, and now the education reform, which is aimed strictly at busting the unions, the independent union, CNTE, and, and privatizing education that are reforms made in the U.S. Again, the NAFTA and all the free trade agreements, the Merida plan, they have all concocted these privatization means. And when people resist, those U.S. imposed policies, they're repressed by U.S. weapons. So do you think the uh, United States should stop shipment of arms to uh, the, uh, Mexico? And also, what role should the labor movement here take in support of the teachers in Mexico? This aid should be stopped unconditionally. Some folks say it should be stopped when this or that repression stops. No, unconditionally because those weapons are precisely the ones used to massacre the people of Mexico, be it students, be it farm workers in San Quintin, be it indigenous peoples fighting for their indigenous people's rights and the land and the water. So yes, and what should be the labor role, labor's role? First, stop the repression. Punish and urge, call upon Pelosi, call upon the U.S. to demand, to demand an investigation into the killings. That there should be, the labor movement should stand in solidarity from the top to bottom with the trade union movement in Mexico led by the independent sectors of the CNTE. That there should be punishment for all those responsible for the killings and all military, U.S. military aid to Mexico should be stopped. That's what the labor movement should be saying right now. How many teachers are in jail? They've jailed some of the leaders of the CNT. Why don't you talk about that? The, as of today, 10 people uh, are known to have died in Nochtitlan. The number of injured is close to 108. But we don't have all the information because we've now learned this morning that in the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, two hours from Nochtitlan, there was another massacre committed that was under the radar precisely because all the attention was focused on the clearing the, uh, the, the highway in Nochtitlan, which is just outside of the city of Oaxaca. Um, the main union leaders have been jailed and sent from Oaxaca up to the main federal penitentiary in the state of Sonora. That's where Chapo Guzman was held. That's where the leaders of APO, the uh, Assembly of People in Oaxaca, 10 years ago were sent. And so a lot of the leaders who weren't jailed are on the run because they, are, they fear being captured and sent to jail. Do you think Mexico is a colony of the United States at this point? It's a colony in the sense that all the policies that are decided in Mexico uh, are implemented in Mexico were decided in Washington that uh, all the um, th that the elections are staged the US was heavily involved in the fraud that elected both Peña Nieto and before him Fox um, and everybody knows that the machines were rigged that the whole PR system was rigged paid and bought these politicians are paid and bought by the U.S. government, absolutely. You want to say something in Spanish? Bueno, nada más para saludar a los maestros y decir de que necesitamos más solidaridad con los maestros estudiantes en México después de Ayotzinapa, hoy Nochtitlán y Oaxaca están al centro de la lucha del pueblo y de los trabajadores. Viva la lucha del pueblo y de los trabajadores de Oaxaca. My name is Al Rojas. I'm with the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, AFL-CIO. What's going on here today? Why are you in San Francisco? Well, I'm from Sacramento. We drove up, me and Fatima, who's a board member, Garcia, and show solidarity you know, here. And also, so we can pass on the information to social media that the movement towards uh, uh, what's happening in Oaxaca is beginning to spread all over the country. And hopefully we do the same thing 
not only in Sacramento, but other places that you know may come up. I think that what we have here is a situation where we need to make a real strong point that what's happening in Oaxaca isn't just Oaxaca, it's coming from this country and it's politics and policies such as Plan Merida, which is mentioned here today and we about that. We need to do something with the uh, congressmen, the local and the senators here, especially right now with the politics with the presidential election. I think that we lack responsibility by not putting pressure on them and we should be meeting as a block that we did here. As some people in Mexico say, and some Mexicans here were saying out here, by coming here, nothing happens in Mexico. But what Mexico is concerned about, and where they're concerned, is when we go to the congressman and tell them, we want you to stop Plan Merida and bring it back until the blood stops, and maybe even talk about rescinding it, and also go after the whole question of the NAFTA agreement too. But isn't Hillary Clinton and the Democrats and Republicans both supporting militarization and supporting NAFTA at this point? Absolutely. The uh, Senate version of the immigration reform that most people don't read basically is uh, legislation that allows for that very thing, to build a border wall, billions of dollars, and to put more uh, military on the border, forcing migrants into the most dangerous parts of the border. But is that the solution? No. The whole question of uh, this whole question of uh, of the violence of what's happening with uh, this immigration reform is that they're all supporting guest worker programs. And guest worker programs are basically being supported by the United Farm Workers Union. They're down in San Quintin, they're up in Washington State, and have been for years. One third of their membership is uh, guest workers. Nothing against the guest workers, but what's happening with the HR1 and HR2A what they're doing is they're replacing the undocumented community, more and more so, especially the Driscoll Corporation. While they're recruiting people from San Quintin and uh, having them coming in and recruiting from places where the turmoil is at, Oaxaca, Guerrero, and also the southern states that are having more extreme poverty. So are you saying this terrorism campaign against the Mexican working classes, the United States has some responsibility for it? Absolutely. When you get billions of our tax dollars that are being uh, allocated by President Obama and has for the eight years and he, when he could have when he first came in ended Plan Merida or at least put you know put put it down to you know assurances that money's not going to be used uh, or Black Hawk helicopters being used now to bomb with tear gas and bombs uh, against uh, uh, defenseless people simply because they want to march and denying them the right to expression, the right to manifest and protest. So when we have this money, uh, you have these federal police. They're not federal police, they're military. And the military is being armed by our government and by our Democrats and our, the Republicans also and the President of the United States. Lo que está pasando aquí es que eh, eh, el problema viene de aquí de Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo? Tenemos el Plan Mérida. Plan Mérida son billones de dólares que están uh, invirtiendo para armar el militar mexicano. ¿Para qué? Para reprimir movimientos uh, sociales, militantes, sobre lo que está pasando de privatizar la educación pública en México. Además también privatizar y reformar las leyes laborales. Todo esto viene de Estados Unidos. Viene de las corporaciones y ahí es donde está el problema. Sí, es Peña Nieto, pero ellos son acá los gringos, los impuestos de todos nosotros. So, eso, es lo que, eso es lo que está pasando. And privatization, what's going on in Mexico as far as privatization uh, of the economy and, and education? In Spanish. Pues lo que está pasando, lo acabo de decir, es que quieren privatizar las escuelas. ¿Para qué? para que la gente no esté educada en la juventud, porque hace falta la mano de obra barata. Si, si los educan, van a comenzar a, a entender y preguntar, y preguntar qué deben entender, se van a revoltear y se van a hacer revoltosos. Entonces, con la, están las condiciones, con más ganas, y de ahí viene revolución. Y esa revolución 
es los maestros, los maestros están educados y es lo que está pasando, ya se educaron, eran campesinos, eran indocumentados que venían del otro lado, venían de allá de México para acá a hacer su trabajo como esclavos. Conozco un compañero que es maestro ahora, que aquí anduvo trabajando en la hamburguesa, en la McDonald's, en la Carl Juniors, en el campo, en las pacadoras, y acabó con decir, basta, me voy a México a educarme. And some people are, are talking about a revolution in Mexico, that you need a revolution. What's your view about this movement of the working class in Mexico and what is required to defend the working class in Mexico, in England? Well, what the government's basically doing is, uh, is making a horrible mistake about how far people will go. And they're pushing them and pushing them to a point where they think they can dominate them through violence. None of these people have been in Oaxaca with arms, but they have arms. And they're going to push them to an extent where they've been asking for a dialogue. And they're pushing the button that if they don't dialogue and they keep beating them up and killing them, then they're going to have enough to come back and say, we need to regroup. And we need to really think about our strategy. And before you know it, they're not going to be able to control this because once you start the, the fire, it spreads. And that's what's happening right now, uh, now in, not only in Mexico, but all over the world, where the eyes of the world are in Oaxaca. Well, there's a blackout of all the, Amer the corporate media in this country. It's really weird that there's a, a, a blackout that you hear nothing of the killings. Why? Well, there's a vested interest. What's that vested interest? Oil. And they now have the oil because they privatized it. And who was the messenger? Obama. The first day he came into office, the first thing he did, and first trip, official uh, trip, was uh, to any country, foreign, was Mexico. And where did he do that? Oh, I'm going to go congratulate Peña Nieto for having the Walmarts, the Costcos, Home Depots in Mexico help him win the election. They do it here, why not in Mexico? They do it outright corruptly. So what happens? Uh, we just want to remind you, according to what we believe strongly, because what's happened now with privatizing the oil, is the message was to him, the oil corporations have sent me as the messenger that you got to privatize the Mexican oil. They did. Yeah, I'm Bob Price. Um, I'm with AFT 2121 and the Freedom Socialist Party. So, And what's going on here? Why are you protesting? I'm protesting because the Mexican government is reaching new levels of uh, repression against the people in Mexico, I mean, who are fighting for the schools not to be privatized, to be fighting for, you know, the kind of education that the people in Mexico deserve. I mean, instead of what the government is doing under NAFTA, its agreement with the United States is doing the same thing they're doing here, is trying to limit public education, cut it back, and this education reform is all about that, all about the privatization agenda for public education, and so the Mexican teachers are right to be out in the streets and to be bringing about general strikes and that sort of situation, and I'm really in support of that, and the Mexican government Shooting, shooting teachers is not acceptable, and murdering, murdering activists. This has to stop. I mean, they've been doing it for some time now, so we, and we know this. So. And what's the role of the United States government in Mexico in this whole situation? Well, as I said, NAF, NAFTA is a big connection. Is under the North American Free Trade Agreement, Mexico has to do certain things, make neoliberal reforms that are part of the education. The education reforms are part of that. But aside from that, the Plan Merida sends a lot of uh, military aid to Mexico to, to basically militarize the police and use the military against the people when uprisings like this happen, which are bound to happen in that country where you know, there's more and more repression and, and less and less for the, the poor. So are you for shutting off military exports by the United States to Mexico? I am, certainly. Yes, I think that needs to be done. So. My name is Rachel Kinney. And are you with a union or organization? Um, I'm an intern at Global Exchange this summer. And what's going on here today? Um, what I understand, there's been the, the way that the government and the police are reacting to um, teachers in Oaxaca who are asserting their rights is through violent action and I'm not okay with that.
My name is Saraceli. We are for um, Living Wage, or San Francisco Living Wage, and we are protesting because uh, there was a massacre of teachers and students in Oaxaca, Mexico, last Sunday. So we want the government to stop the massacre, and we ask the U.S. government to stop the help, the aid to uh, Mexican government to support the troops there.